In the previous series of videos, we were talking about using the uh, using synthetic division, and now we want to see a very neat application of that, which is the remainder theorem. Now, in the past, we were talking about how, if we were to do division with these polynomial functions, we get unique answers. We get our quotient function, and we get our remainder function, and we'd write that over our divisor. Now, that's just the general division algorithm that we have for doing synthetic division, or just really, I mean, in terms of doing division uh, with two polynomials. But specifically, we want to rewrite this guy and to see this as f of x divided by x minus k, because that's the synthetic division talking. And we get, again, that unique quotient function plus we're just going to get our remainder. I don't need to write this as a remainder function, but it's just the remainder over what we were dividing by the x minus k. Now, we talked about how we've got this form right here and how we can kind of go back and forth from this equation to rewriting this as f of x is equal to the product of the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder if we were to check this. We're going to see something very similar here in terms of this particular division algorithm. So we can rewrite f of x to be the divisor x minus k times the quotient and then plus the remainder. So this is going to lead us to the remainder theorem, which we're going to get to here in just a moment. Okay, So taking this uh, the way it's written right here, uh, you're going to see this come up in the homework. So they might do something like this. They might say or ask you to rewrite a particular function. They'll say rewrite 3x to the third minus 5x squared plus 22x minus 7, and they want you to rewrite it like this. They'll say, rewrite this as x minus 5 times something plus something like that. Basically, they want you to write it in this form, where this x minus k is this guy right here. And if that's your x minus k, then that means we can do synthetic division. They want you to write your quotient in here, and then want you to write the remainder here. So let's work that out and see what it looks like. So with synthetic division, okay, we want to start off looking like this. I'm going to have my k value out here. This goes all the way up to x to the third, so we're going to say x to the third, column for x squared, x, and then the constant. Now, understand that this is in the form x minus k right here. And we talked about how in that form, you do the opposite of what you see. So I see a negative 5, I do the opposite, so I'm going to write positive 5 here. x to the third, the coefficient is 3. And then we have negative 5x squared, 22x, and negative 7. And as we've seen with synthetic division, we're going to have this little box here at the end, which is where our remainder goes. All right, so synthetic division says bring down the 3, just as you see it. And then it's all about multiplying and adding. So multiply. Multiply this number times the k value of 5, so we get 15. Negative 5 and 15 is 10. Multiply times the k value again. That's 50, so we end up with 72. And now we multiply times... 5 one more time and we end up with 360 and 360 combined with a negative 7 gives us 353 so here's how we write our answer our quotient our q of x is going to be coming from this stuff down here so this was not x to the third it's now x squared this is now x 
that's your constant and this is your remainder. So I'm going to write this as 3x squared plus 10x plus 72. And then we take this remainder and the remainder just goes right here. Now I know we did synthetic division, but we need to understand what the problem is looking for from our synthetic division. It wasn't asking us to divide, it was asking us to rewrite. So if you look at the forms that we have above, what we saw in the last videos is that we were doing division to write the quotient and then the remainder over the divisor. This problem is asking us to rewrite this function, rewrite this polynomial as the product of what is basically our divisor times the quotient plus the remainder term. The same kind of work that you would do to check when you were doing uh, your long division or converting from a, an improper fraction to a mixed number. If I were to multiply these guys out and add back in the 353, I'm going to come right back here to my original polynomial. So that's if you were asked to rewrite. Now I want you to compare this to when the instructions ask you to divide. So if instead the problem had been written 3x to the third minus 5x squared plus 22x minus 7 divided by x minus 5. So this is a different way of, I guess, a different way of interpreting the results from synthetic division. But you would still do synthetic division as the easiest way of doing the division. So we've already done the work here, and the answer to the division problem, if that's what they were asking, would be 3x squared plus 10x plus 72, and then take the remainder, 353, over the divisor x minus 5. So please make sure you understand what the question is asking. Is it asking... <clears throat> Is it asking you to rewrite, or is it asking you to do division? Okay, so let's take this, and let's go on to the, the, the big thing, the big idea here with the remainder theorem. Okay, so the remainder theorem uses synthetic division, and it does something really, really neat. All right, so here is what the remainder theorem says. It says that if, if f of x, a polynomial function, if that is divided by x minus k, then, here's the neat part, then the remainder from doing that synthetic division, then the remainder is equal to f of k. The remainder is going to be the function evaluation. So, looking at the work that we just did, let me kind of put this up here so we can see it. So here is the synthetic division that we just did for that particular problem. And let's see how that remainder theorem works out. So this would work out by me saying this. So if I say that you are given f of x is equal to 3x to the third minus 5x squared plus 22x minus 7. Given this guy, I want you to evaluate f of 5. So when we evaluate f of 5, the remainder theorem, so this guy right here, the remainder theorem says that if you, you do division by this factor, then the remainder is equal to f of k. That means when I try to evaluate f of 5, this is my k value right here. 
if you look at the synthetic division when I used a k value of 5, you got a result of 353. So that means f of 5 is 353. And to see why that works, look up here when I asked you to rewrite that, um, that polynomial a while ago. So I say that this function right here could be rewritten as what you see right up here. It's the exact same thing. Now, because I've got the x minus 5, that then determines that the stuff here in blue is going to be unique. Okay? If I try to plug in 5 here, if I plug in 5 for all these x's here, or I plug in 5 for the x's here, this should be the same because we're saying these expressions are equal. But check this out. If I plug in 5 right here, 5 minus 5 is 0. And 0 times, I don't even care what this is, because 0 times anything is going to be 0. Which means you plug in 5, this stuff goes away because it's 0, and you're left with 353. So when you do synthetic division, like I have right here, this remainder is the same as if I had replaced all of the x's up here with 5. And so that's, that's pretty much it. It's not really a whole lot to that. It's just that you're doing this synthetic division, and you have to make sure that you're putting in the right value, paying attention to your signs. So let me give you another example so we can make sure we understand what's going on here. So, suppose that you were given f of x is equal to 3x to the fifth plus 9x to the fourth minus 28x to the third minus 38x minus 7. So you're given this function. And I want you to find or evaluate f of negative 5. Okay, so to evaluate f of negative 5, you could replace all of these x's with negative 5, and then, you know, just work it out. But we have synthetic division, and synthetic division says, or and the remainder theorem, when you combine those two guys together, it says that if you do synthetic division with the right k value, the remainder will be the same as if you had plugged negative 5 into the function to begin with. So when it's in this form, that is your k value. So when you start filling things out, there's k. We go all the way up to x to the fifth power. So let's make sure that we don't skip anything as we go down. Okay. So my k value is this value here exactly as you see it. So that's negative 5. I know in the past we took the number that we saw and we did the opposite, but that's not what this remainder theorem says. The remainder theorem says f of k. Okay. So there's no negative here. It's just exactly as you see it. So when I ask you to evaluate f of negative 5, that is your k value. I have 3x to the fifth. 9x to the 4th, minus 28x to the 3rd, I almost put negative 38. That would have been bad. See, for x squared, there is no x squared term, so I need to write 0. Negative 38x, negative 7. Again, you miss, you miss one sign, and the whole thing's going to blow up. So first, let's bring down the 3. And it's all going to be about multiply and add. So multiply. We get negative 15, add, we get negative 6. Multiply times the k value again, that's 30. Add these guys, we get positive 2. Multiply to get negative 10, add to get negative 10. Multiply times the k value of negative 5 positive 50, negative 38 and 50 is positive 12, multiply times negative 5 one last time, we get negative 60. When we combine these guys, 
our remainder term is negative 67. That remainder term is our answer. And the way that we express this, the way that we write this out, is that we say f of negative 5 is equal to negative 67. And that's all we really need to do. So in the next video, we're just going to run through some more examples to make sure that we are able to plug things in correctly without having any issues.